This is a fast tutorial to get started with Composite Brush. Go to Effect, Vranos, Composite Brush. Click and drag over the colors that you want to remove. Control or Command click and drag over the colors you want to keep. There are a variety of different transfer modes. By default, you have this HSV color, which just lets you see what's happening on your footage. You can change the color here, but we'll get into that later. Most of the time, you'll want to use Stencil Alpha to cut out the background. As for matte types, the fastest is the hard matte type. The highest quality is Soft 1.6. I wouldn't recommend using any of these other ones unless you're a very advanced user. These are mostly only in here to preserve older projects that had been using these. If you notice any gaps, just alt-click on those areas, and Composite Brush will try to separate the colors. One important thing to know about Composite Brush is it's color-based, meaning that if your background color and foreground color are exactly the same, the effects will not be able to separate them. In this case, there's a slight difference, so the key works. Whenever you're done brushing, I would recommend pressing Optimize and Soften. This doesn't actually change the key, it just makes things run a little faster. This process works with any color. One of the common issues you'll deal with with any key is spill. In this case, we have the red background spilling over the character. After Effects has a great built-in spill suppressor, the advanced spill suppressor, I'd set it to ultra mode, and I'd probably just get started here. The issue is, with colors that aren't green and blue, this doesn't always do the best job. I'm sure that you can tweak these dials and get this working, but in this case it might be tougher. You can create a new instance of Composite Brush. While I'm here, I'm just going to fix the area that I didn't clean up properly from further out, just all clicking and dragging. I'll disable this, and on my new instance, I'll select it, and I'm going to try to click and drag all the areas of the background, but also the areas that have spill. So probably around here too. There are different transfer modes that can help despill. Let's just try saturation. Set this to black for zero saturation. And we'll grab some of these spill areas and see what we can do. And then just alt click to preserve the face. Let's turn our key back on. And we'll set the matte type to soft which will help blend through some of these areas a little bit better. And you can see what it's doing. It does act as a pretty good spill suppressor. Even on a tough shot, where the foreground, her skin and her lips, is a very similar color to the background color. One thing you might have noticed that's unusual about Composite Brush is I'm stacking two instances and not having a problem here. And for a moment, I'm going to disable these two effects, just to explain this. If I go to Color Correction, use Hue and Saturation, and take all the color out of this video, and then I go to Keying, Key Light, and try to select the background, it's not going to work because this background is no longer red it's looking at the black and white image. However, you'll notice, this actually does work to some degree on the original. One thing you'll notice with Composite Brush is that if we make this black and white and we put it above the Composite Brush keying instance, Composite Brush still works. Composite Brush isn't pulling a key on this gray background versus all the grays on her. That would be impossible. Instead, Composite Brush is always looking back to the colors of the original layer, and any of the effects above it are ignored when it's pulling its key. This is why you can stack multiple instances without them interfering with each other.
Those are the basics. Check out the website for more info. Thanks for watching.